face the final frontier. Well, it is if you've got a multi-billion dollar budget like NASA, but I haven't. I'm Lynn Taylor, and I'm here on a more modest scale to see just how far my rocketeers can go on a budget of, say, 50 pounds. I've chosen three basic rockets for the experiment. They vary in size, price, and method of propulsion. But the one thing that these, and in fact all rockets have in common, is that they work on Sir Isaac Newton's third law of motion, which is that to every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, a rocket throws mass in one direction and benefits from the reaction that occurs in the opposite direction as a result. Well, that's the theory. Now let's put it into practice. Time for you to meet my rocketeers, and time for me to get changed. I've heard people say that too much of anything is not good for you, baby. But I don't know about that. There's many times that we've loved and we've shared love and made love. Well, who says science can't be sexy? Let's take a look at rocket number one. Now, rocket number one is a baking soda and vinegar-powered rocket. This rocket uses the chemical reaction caused between the vinegar and the baking soda. Mixed, they produce a buildup of carbon dioxide in the chamber, creating a pressure so strong it will push out the bung and propel the rocket skyward. So, Rocketeer Armstrong, you're currently one small step away from the other rockets, but you think you're going to be one giant leap ahead at the end? Absolutely. Let's take a look at rocket number two. With this rocket, air is forced into the water-filled chamber via a foot pump. When maximum pressure is achieved, the valve is then released and the rocket is thrust into the sky. Rocketeer Olden, there's been a bit of a buzz about this rocket. Are you quietly confident you're going to be a winner? Of course. Let's take a look at rocket number three. Now this rocket works on the good old-fashioned idea of gunpowder. When the powder, containing charcoal, potassium nitrate and sulphur, is ignited, it causes an explosion, which in turn propels the rocket towards the stars. Rocketeer Collins, you have the more traditional and obvious form of method of propulsion, but are you still worried that you might get left in the wake and glory of the other rocketeers? No, Lynn, I'm going to win, because flying rockets is my speciality. I understand you're also responsible for the flight calculations today. That's right, Lynn. I'll be using my trusty compass climber to track and measure the altitude of the rocket, so all is safe with me. Well then, we've seen the rockets, and I know which one my money's back in for the furthest launch. It's now time for blast off. Let the countdown commence. Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Well, it's been a long day, but the flight calculations are finally in. And I can honestly tell you there's been some interesting results. By far the worst performer of the day, the bicarbonate of soda and vinegar rocket even got off the ground. Uh, in medium position, though, we are looking at a strong contender here. For pole position, it is the air and water pressurised rocket, but the granddaddy of them all. We're looking at the traditional gun powder fueled rocket, reaching almost 100 metres in height. So I guess, in answer to my question, how far can my rocketeers go on a budget of, say, £50? Pounds? I guess the answer could be reaching almost to the stars. Well, I'm Lynn Taylor, and I hope you've enjoyed my world of rocketry.